radio show. We normally try to get manly men on the show, but I noticed that Peter was drinking tea this morning, you guys. I saw his coffee <laughs> cup. It had a little that little thing that hangs out over the teacup. So I'm not sure. As soon as I saw that, I thought about pulling the plug, but we'll go ahead and do the, the interview anyway. No, it's a sign of tremendous confidence in my own masculinity. That's <laughs> oh, it. that's what it is. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, that's what it is. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine. Roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Junior in high school, the Lord began to awaken my family in a way that we didn't even know was possible. And, you know, again, Catholic schools, weekly mass, all that. But we never talked about the Lord at home. We never, you know, had conversations. He wasn't like a living Lord for us. I mean, I think my mom and dad, uh, no question, had real faith. But um, we also had a big problem at the center of our life as a family. My dad, who was a tank commander in Patton's Third Army, battled the bulge, all that. He was, uh, he could speak fluent German. He was there at the liberation of Mauthausen concentration camp. He was a decorated soldier and all that. But when he got home, what he developed, what he what he brought home with him was we'd call it today PTSD. And part of the way, Dad and I noticed some of his other siblings, or excuse me, other friends from the war, uh, dealt with it. In those days, people didn't talk about those issues, and he stuffed a lot of that pain, anger, confusion by drinking. And he was very successful in life and the things that he did, except uh, the drink got him at a certain point. And uh, he went through treatment a few times, and nothing ever happened. And um, my junior year in high school, my oldest sister, uh, Kathy, who had a family about lived about three or four hours away from home, called and said, hey, I'm coming home this weekend. I, I got to tell you something. We're living in a privileged moment of the Holy Spirit when the graces of Pentecost, these, the outpouring of the presence of the Spirit and the gifts that accompany the living presence of the Spirit are, are emerging again in the lives of ordinary people. John Paul II said at one point, really astounding thing in 1998, he said at the council, at the Second Vatican Council, the bishops of the world rediscovered the charismatic dimension, his exact word, rediscovered the charismatic dimension as being co-essential with the institutional of making up what the church is. You asked why this is so important. There's a 25 cent word here that I described. What's the Holy Father talking about? He said as co-essential with with the work of the Spirit and the institution, what Jesus established, you know, the the sacraments, the priesthood, the apostolic succession, that ins- the, the kind of the foundational institutional pieces. He said, but it's all enlivened, and the whole church lives by the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ's own life, the promise. And when he said, you know, one of the last things he said, Luke 24, uh, he comes to the upper room, it's the first, you know, uh, post-resurrection appearance of Jesus in Luke's gospel. And what does he say to the apostles? He said, you're my witnesses. Everything that's happened to me is going, happened to me was according to the scripture. And all of it has led to this moment. And what this is all about now is, you know, that I, that I died, I rose again. So you're going to witness to my resurrection and you're going to bring the forgiveness of sins to a world that needs the forgiveness of sin. So there's the core of their assignment. And then Jesus says to them very clearly, but you need to wait. You need to wait until I clothe you with power. What do we need to be speaking to men? What is the Holy Spirit saying to men today? Yeah, so much. Uh, the, the key, the key thing is, is that, um, two things. One is just personal to say what what Jesus wants you to know and what he wants to do is to open your life uh, to a fuller relationship with him if you'll let him do it. He he loves you. He And what that means, think about this, think about this the other day. He was born of Mary. He's a man. He's the God man. He's a man, which means he has human emotions. He has human thoughts. He has human passions. He has all that stuff. And what did he say? So he, like you, you know, he wants to bond with you. Funny. He, he loves to be, he's a man, so he loves to be with men. He loves to talk to you like a man, but he wants to love you. He said, I love you the way the Father loves me. He wants us to know that. That's the most freeing thing. So a lot of guys are stuck with, you know, feeling like some way the Lord is distant. Maybe he's not happy with them. 
and in our own heads we're accusing ourselves of falling short. The devil's always looking to, to get us to be distracted and not to open ourselves to the Lord fully because we don't see a lot of models in the world of people that we're impressed by, men that we're impressed by, that are radically opening up their heart. Now, if you look for it, you find it. But I'm talking mm. about just in the media and the rest of it. It's, it looks as if hardly anyone is doing that. So guys, wanna, we want to hold our cards close to the vest. We don't want to get too spiritual. We want to fit in. We want to look manly. And getting serious about religion can seem unmanly to some people. And what it is, is it's getting in touch with and, and experiencing the fulfillment of your own heart and what it means to be a man. Like you can't believe this, the person of Jesus reveals manhood to us, but he wants to have a relationship with you that, that you know, that you're loved, that he's patient with you. He's kind, he's good. He's gentle. He's got a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. He wants to call you into it. He wants to empower you. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.